Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode in the engine swap series of my Mark 1 Golf. Today we are going to take a look at the new engine going into the car and we are also going to rebuild a pair of double barrel Delorto DHLA carburetors. In 1982 my Golf rolled off the assembly line equipped with a 1.5 litre engine. Little over a year ago I pulled that engine out to replace it with a 1.8 litre engine that is currently in it. The 1.8 with its 90 horsepower is a nice upgrade from the 1.5 70 horsepower but I have always been curious to know how fast my Golf can get once it has GTI like power figures. So that is why we are once again going to swap out the engine of my Golf. This time for a 2 liter 8 valve engine with a crossflow cylinder head. In stock form these engines put out 115 horsepower at the crank which should make my Golf a lot more exciting to drive. I could have gone for a 16 valve engine but those swaps are usually a lot more expensive and in my opinion these engines are more reliable. Hence why we are staying with a trusty 8 valve engine which arguably is the more boring option of the two, but there is a twist. Normally these engines have multi-point fuel injection. Uh, I've got the original manifold right here that sits like this. And as you can see there are these tiny holes where an injector can be installed which puts fuel into the cylinders. But we are not going to go that route as I've always felt like Installing an engine with fuel injection would make my Golf feel a little bit too modern for my taste. So that is why we are going to stay with carburetors to put fuel in my engine. More specifically, I have bought two of these Delorto DHLA 40s that will sit about here. And not only will they supply the engine with fuel, but hopefully they will also make an incredible sound while being on the car. Uh, but before we can go ahead and install these, they need a proper rebuild. The DHLA 40 is a double barrel carburetor, which means that it is made out of two barrels with a diameter of 40mm that have their own venturis and throttle blades. In simple terms, they are two carburetors merged into one. The beauty of these carburetors is that if properly tuned they can work on pretty much every engine and that is why I picked them up for this project. I bought a pair for 80 euros which is an absolute steal but they are not in perfect condition as you would expect. For example some parts of the aluminum cast have broken off, the jetting for my application is completely wrong and the throttle linkage is very squeaky. So before we are slapping these carburetors on my engine, we are going to do a complete rebuild. Now obviously if you want to rebuild a pair of carburetors like this, you need a lot of specific parts. And for this project I was lucky to have the support of the people over at Classic Carbs UK, who have helped me source all the parts that I need and also gave me a lot of advice. So that is why I placed a big order at Classic Cars UK uh, and that is how I got all of these parts at once. Uh, and actually the owner Emmanuel was very kind to make a little video for you guys showing everything that I need for this project. Hello Memphis and thanks to all your followers for having a look at this and I appreciate uh, you giving us a bit of air time on your channel mate. Um, we're from England and we deal with Weber and Delorto carburetors and carburetor conversions and uh, the Mark 1 Golf like yours is a good example so um, thanks for getting in touch and I'm just going to show you the parts that we're sending you uh, I believe you're converting your uh, 8 valve to twin DHLA carburetors 40mm carburetors and um, I spoke to you a bit on email about the Delorters that you have and it sounds like you've got a pretty good handle on what you're doing and the way you're going in the direction of the classic performance upgrade options for your Golf and tuning etc. So I'm just going to show you what we're going to send you and um, 
it'd be cool to see what you do with it, man. So the key ingredient is this uh, converting uh, intake manifold. So uh, that will accept your uh, DHLAs onto your engine. On top of this, you've got these mishab spacer mounts. You've selected these, man, and good on you for knowing what you're doing. Like I said, it sounds like you really are thorough with your work, so that's brilliant. So these are going to help prevent vibration uh, of the carburetors. So these sit here, then your carburetors sit on top of those, and it stops the fuel frothing inside uh, the float chambers. So you've got the, the manifold, you've got the mishap spacers, you've got the ram air, air filters. These basically st stretch over the trumpets of the carburetor, so you just put it on, pull it off. Very sort of easy to use. You can just wash them in warm soapy water, let them air dry. So these will help uh, keep your, your air clean. The other key ingredient here is the Mangaletsi throttle linkage that you've gone for. All right. I don't know if you can see these clearly, but this is an overhead throttle linkage system perfect for a Golf because of the access and angle of the throttle cable. So this is an all-in-one kit and includes the levers, the balance uh, uh, and the throttle lever that you're going to need to drive both carburetors so the throttle opens together. It's just cast aluminium bolts on top of your carburetor that's the, the lead carburetor and then it drives your slave carburetor all in one kit with levers and then you've got standard service parts for rebuilding your DHLAs all right some of the bits especially the o-rings that are in this kit you might not need so go through your carburetors fully if you still have a few o-rings remaining don't worry mate because the, these are made to fit all the different variations of DHLAs and some of them have more o-rings than others also got a new fuel float okay and you've also got this right these are uh, gaskets for mounting carburetors onto the intake manifold and these are possibly extras that you've ordered because these are enough mate okay you can just use these but you might have a reason why you've ordered these so let me know buddy um, you've also got the pump diaphragms uh, fuel filters internal fuel filters and the needle valve assemblies so you're doing a full rebuild on your carburetors you've got some emulsion tubes you've got some starter jets you've got some air corrector jets a throttle valve screw, an additional internal filter, fuel filter. You've got a ball bearing, that's for a spindle. And you've got some main jets as well. Anyway, man, I'm keen to see how you unfold with this, how it works for you. And uh, hopefully once you start the engine and you balance them, you'll uh, immediately see uh, why DHLA carburetors and Weber carburetors are well known and uh, likable because they do have a special um, pedigree so your engine should perform sweeter you should have a very nice progression from all, all the rev range uh, very nice sound uh, possibly increased horsepower it's very likely but we don't promise anything until you've bolted it and balanced it and very nice throttle response man so i think it will be a nice upgrade for your golf and for your viewers to watch you uh, and learn from your experience your filming showing what you do and it's brilliant mate and i'm looking forward to seeing you do it as well so over to you mate good luck and keep in touch if you need anything else which you probably will but let me know mate and i'll be very happy to help you so all the best and stay in touch see ya Working with Emmanuel and the people over at Classic Carbs UK has been a really nice experience. So if you are ever in the need for some uh, carburetor parts, I would strongly recommend taking a look at their website. And Emmanuel also has a really nice YouTube channel called Rusty Love in which 
he does uh, work to alt cars with his friends. If you are interested in all of that, I'm going to leave the link to his website and to his YouTube channel in the description below. And thank you Emmanuel for all the support. With that out of the way, let's start this project by taking apart both of these carburetors. Since there are a lot of small pieces involved in this rebuild, I bought two of these handy containers to store everything safely. We're starting by taking off the fuel inlet. Then I'm taking off the top cover, which is locked down by four screws. Attached to the cover is the float assembly. To take off the float, a small pin has to be knocked out from the side where there is a split in the aluminum. With the float out of the way, the gasket and the float needle can be removed. Next we are removing the idle jets. These are not only involved in the idling of the engine, but they also affect its progression and cruising. Now the emulsion tube gets removed. This tube holds the air corrector jet on top and the main jet on the bottom. And it is the part that has the most influence on the air fuel mixture going into the engine. Then the pump weights can be removed and this is a tricky job since they come with a tiny spring and a ball that can be easily lost. Next I'm taking out the choke jet. Then it's time to take out the acceleration jet. This is the jet that regulates how much fuel gets injected into the manifold once you press the accelerator. Now the air bleed screws can be removed. I believe these will need to be adjusted once we want to balance the carburetors. Then I'm taking out the vacuum blanking screw. This covers vacuum ports that can be used to attach a gauge for balancing the carbs. The cover for the progression holes can get removed and then the idle mixture screws can come out as well. It is important to make sure that the little spring and washer come out with them. That is everything on top of the carburetor removed, so now let's do the same on the bottom. 
The pump cover is held in with four screws on the carburetor and one nut on the throttle spindle. Then the pump diaphragm can be removed with its spring. With its screws removed, the pump cover housing can be taken off as well. And boy is it dirty inside. I think all of this residue is a sign that this carburetor has been sitting unused for quite some time. So it is a good thing that we are taking it apart completely because otherwise we would have never noticed this. On the pump cover housing sits a non-return valve that can be unscrewed as well. With everything removed on the bottom, we're moving to taking out the chokes and the auxiliary venturis. They are held in by a locking screw and once that is removed, they slide out fairly easy. Now comes the most challenging part of the disassembly and that is to remove the throttle spindle and the bearings holding it in. The spindle has two nuts on either side that need to be removed first. This throttle linkage part didn't want to come off easily, so for now I just left it alone. Next we can go ahead and remove the screws of the throttle butterflies. They are very stuck so I have to be really careful not to strip them. With those removed we can start taking out the spindle. Then I put a nut on one end of the spindle and gently try to tap it out.
One bearing is still in the carburetor, but with the help of a punch it can be knocked out. And with all of the parts removed, we can close up the box and mark it so that we know of which carburetor these parts came. Both of them are now completely stripped so we can go ahead and get them cleaned before reassembling them. Okay, we are a couple of days and a haircut later uh, and this is where we are at. So I took both the empty shells to where I work uh, because they have an ultrasonic cleaner there. And there I have put them in the cleaner for about 20 minutes I think. And this is how they came out. Overall they are pretty clean but there still are some spots where you can see some fuel residue. But that can be easily cleaned by hand. I'm already happy that I didn't have to clean the entire carp by hand because that would be a giant pain in the neck. But something annoying that I noticed when I took the carps out of the ultrasonic cleaner was that the aluminium looked a lot darker than it did before. Uh, and one of my colleagues could tell me that this was caused by me letting the parts sit in the ultrasonic bed for too long, causing the aluminium to become a darkish grey. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of this look. I think it looks a bit ugly, uh, especially when it will be fitted onto the inlet manifold. So that is why I took a Scotch-Brite pad and uh, sanded one of the carbs to see if I could make the aluminium look a little bit more fresh. And in my opinion, this looks a lot better than this. So before we go ahead and rebuild this carburetor, I'm going to give it the same treatment as this one and then we can go ahead and install all the new fresh parts that Classic Carbs UK have sent me. To speed up the process I took out my Dremel with a steel wire wheel to clear up the dark grey colour. That gives the aluminum a shiny appearance which I'm also not a fan of. So then I go over everything with a scotch bright pad to give it a matte finish again. I also use the wire wheel to clean up some of the brass parts and the result is better than I expected. So with all our parts fresh and clean we can go ahead and slap everything back together. One important note though before we start assembling and that is that for every engine there is obviously a different jetting needed. The jets that were in this carburetor are not 100% suitable for my purposes so I had to order new ones. Knowing what jetting you need can be kind of tricky but luckily there are a lot of manuals around that can help you with that. I don't have one of those manuals but luckily the people over at Classic Carbs UK have helped me do my jetting and I'll quickly show my jetting on the screen in case anyone wants to do a similar project like mine. I'll also add it in the description if you want to copy and paste it. Now let's get on with the build. Everything gets assembled in the opposite order of the disassembly so we are starting with the spindle again. First we are installing one of the bearings onto the spindle by gently tapping it on with a hammer and a socket. Then before installing the spindle I'm adding a small amount of grease so that everything can slide in nicely.
To press in the second bearing, I'm supporting the bottom bearing with a socket as well, so that it doesn't slide out while I'm pressing in the other one. Then we can go ahead and install the throttle butterflies. I'm using new screws and I'm installing them with a dab of Loctite because you don't want these to become loose and then get sucked into your engine. It is also very important to make sure that the progression holes are completely covered once the throttle blades are shut. Next, the throttle spring mechanism can be attached to the spindle. With the spindle nut screwed down, the throttle assembly is ready and that is moving a lot smoother and quieter than before. Now we can move to the bottom of the carp again, starting with installing the pump cover housing with a new gasket. Then we do the same thing with the pump cover itself. When locking down the nut for the lever of the acceleration pump, it is important to make sure that there is no load on the plunger before the throttle is pushed in. Then the auxiliary venturis and chokes can be installed. Next, all the jets and screws on top are reinstalled just like before. The only difference is that some of them got new washers and seals. Before installing the float needle I noticed that I didn't have a replacement for the tiny filter that usually sits in it 
and mine is really dirty so I decided to leave it out. If this is bad, please let me know in the comments. And by fastening the fuel pump supply banjo, our first carburetor is completely rebuilt. There is still a second one to do, so I grinded for a couple of hours and finished it without any issues. So here we have the two fully rebuilt carbs and I have to say that I am really proud of myself at how clean they came out, uh, especially since it was my first time doing anything like this. If parts for these carburetors would be less expensive, I would probably be doing these restorations every Sunday afternoon because it is a really relaxing experience. Now obviously there still is some work to be done to the carbs. Uh, for example, I still have to install the throttle linkage kit from Mango Let's See. Uh, and I also have to adjust uh, the float needles and do overall tuning on them, but that will be done on the engine. So yeah, I think now it's time to take the inlet manifold and put it on the engine and then mount the carburetors on top of them so that we can at least get an impression of what all of this will look like in my engine bay. The setup looks great but I immediately spotted some small issues that we are going to need to resolve. For example, uh, my fuel inline comes through here in my engine bay uh, and as you can see this will be an issue if you want to route a fuel line through here so we will need to switch something around. Uh, a second thing I noticed is that one of the throttle linkage parts over here is touching the manifold, uh, maybe that is due to me not mounting it correctly, I will have to look it up in the manual and otherwise we are going to need to make some uh, room for the parts in the manifold. But the last issue is going to be the hardest one to fix um, and that is a clearance issue. So you guys can see that I still haven't mounted anything here, uh, normally there should be four trumpets or air cleaners here uh, and I deliberately waited with ordering them because I wanted to know how much space I have in my engine bay to mount something. If I take a tape measure, you guys can see that roughly the carburetor stick out about 25 to 26 centimeters. And if we go into my current engine bay, it looks like we only have about four or five centimeters of clearance, which is not going to be enough. Uh, so we are probably going to hit the radiator if we mount the carburetors here. And we also have the issue of this radiator hose that exits here, uh, which is also going to touch the carburetors. So I will probably need to buy another radiator or relocate it somehow. Uh, but yeah, that is a problem I will have to figure out. 
other than the radiator, it also seems like we are going to have some clearance issues with the alternator. In my old engine, the alternator sits about here and I think if we would mount it there, it would hit the inlet manifold. So we are going to need to relocate it maybe somewhere here. Uh, but that's our issues that we are going to solve in one of the next episodes. And speaking of future episodes, uh, I think the next video is either going to be about me preparing this engine to go into the car or it's going to be about me showing you guys the new car I have just bought. Let me know in the comments which video you would like to see more and then I can go ahead and make a decision. Uh, so that is all I have for you today. Thank you guys for watching and until next time.